Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. And this morning in the chapel, we have Proverbs 15, 1. It says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous word stirs up anger. So, yeah, trying to watch my words again. Just, I've been really tired, so it's been, like, I'm frustrated a lot. So, yeah, just working on that. Let me check this right here. Whoops. Um, somehow the auto got turned off again, so camera's trying to do that little fade in, fade out thing. But there, I think I got it fixed. Okay, so got a lot in the basket. I actually have some off the hook, so we'll just get started. Um, the first thing is, is that I finally met my goal. <laughs> it was for New Year's. And I got the scarf done. Now, the reason I got it done is because it's for a birthday gift. And if you look, it is totally... I still have to weave in the ends. Um, yeah. All done. Very long. Very flowy. Um, anyway, I have that. And it is completed except for weaving in the ends, which will happen. Um, I found a little... Re, I'm going to recycle a box here and put it in and make that for the... It looks cute in that little, it's a candy box. <laughs> so this is a birthday gift and it'll be out of here. Um, and that one is totally finished. One of the other things is I've need something mindless to do because of my eye. Yes, I have my contacts back in. Yay. Took a week and a half. Um, I still have a little dot. If it gets to irritating me, I have to pull them out and go back to the um, drops. So. But I needed something mindless, and I found this in some stuff that RJ had dropped off for me. I had asked him for a couple of things from the farm that were fiber-related. And this was one of the things that was in it, was the Japanese braid. Um, it's a four- or eight-strand braid. I don't know if y'all do these. I don't know how to say it. Kemi... Kemi... Emo... Disc, can we, I don't know how to say it. Okay, not even gonna. But this one was on there, so I went ahead and finished it. Okay, and it was meant to be a choker. I don't know who it was meant for. Don't know if RD was doing it or I was doing it. Don't really know. Um, because of how, how meticulous I am, I can see that there was only this much made of it. Um, because I, I can see the stop start. And then, of course, I did all of this. So, don't know what I'm going to use this for yet, but since I found it and I got that one off, I thought that poncho has just taken over my mind. And it's the one that I found that beautiful sun sunrise photo online. And, um, yeah, I did the yarn to look like that... Uh, photo so anyway it has taken over my world and right now that's all I'm seeing in my head is that photo it's beautiful so um, I was working on that and then when I found this I got sidetracked and I started making a choker and I thought because the poncho is um, like sunrise I would put a little um, Sun uh, charm on it so and then it can be worn with the poncho so it's got a gold a yellow an orange and a red and it's working up like that so I like it it's got just enough red for pop it's got orange it's got the yellows it I don't know it's what I came up with and I think it'll match that so I've been working on that whenever my eye bothers me so let's start the sweater is pretty simple I started three times on the opposite end and I've ripped it out because I can't get it to lay flat it's just me I couldn't see very well and I think I was twisting the foundation and that's my so I still only have the first um hoping not to pull that out I still am just to right here um so it's I've got the first part of it I just don't have the back started and I want to play with where it comes together so we'll see 
but it's just been sitting there because like I said I've started it and then like I think I'm twisting the chain because I tried to work on it with a bad eye so and yeah I kind of am a perfectionist I guess I don't know it is what it is so the poncho that I'm working on yes it takes up two bags at this point <laughs> that's sad isn't it um so this is one side of it and this is as far as I've gotten on this side um I'm working each color on each side to make sure that the rows match I need to end on the same row and have the same number of rows um so this is one side and it's got the one two three colors and I don't have the third color done I accidentally <laughs> grabbed from the outside so this ball is rolling all over I hate that um, I wound it as a center pole and now I'm having to use it from the outside because I just grabbed the wrong end when I attached it and I wasn't gonna go back and redo it so I just yeah so there's that one and I really like the way it's working up it's it fades really good together and that I worked with the camera a little bit today and positioning if you notice it's not exact I backed it up a little bit turned it to try and get the colors to show through better so I think it's showing the colors very well but we'll see um, you can see that those they're still muted a little bit on the camera but I don't know that, that can ever really change I don't know that a camera can really capture the exact color not on a yarn um, I know some people play with filters or whatever to get it to look right yeah I don't think the naked eye camera can get the perfect color what comes out is what you know should come out so anyway it's it is what it is the other side however and this one takes up like the whole bag right now and I know you see the red and yes I have this was the end of the third color and then it's going to go to the red and I've actually already tied in the red and yes I start in the middle of the row because if you look you really can't see where it ties in unless you're looking for it but if you're wearing this you're not going to look once I get the red all the way across here this is not going to be apparent to the eye um, it just plays a fool's game with you um, and again the way I crochet all I have to do is nip off the ends there's no weaving in except for the very bottom one so I'll have to weave that in and it's on the other one too but I have gotten to the red and see that still looks more orange than it does but I guess up against the orange if I back it up yeah, it still looks orange but it is bright fire engine red okay so it matches the picture that I shared with you guys that inspired this uh, so um, this side I'm done with until I finish the other side and I will tell you this this thing's gonna be warm it is heavy but not too heavy but warm so and then I still have this in this bag is the balls that weren't used and so and then I have my little handwritten remember I just yeah <laughs> that's my pattern right I need to put this in my book I get these papers and then a lot of times they end up thrown away or whatever I'm trying to get better and put them into the book somebody on here said just put them in your book with your ones you know that way you you know where they're at and you have them and all that oops I'm putting this in the wrong bag so this is the only yarn I have left to go on this is the red so um I've been working a lot and then the one day like I normally have Tuesday and Thursday off if I work Saturday well I worked last Saturday and then I had to work half day this Tuesday because I'm off this Saturday and it's just because of the way the week falls um so I uh, 
I had Krista that afternoon, so Tuesday, when I normally have a half a day or whatever, I didn't have any time to myself. So, um, no crocheting. I didn't even get my laundry done. I am totally out of uniforms. So, yeah, that's happening today, too, is the uniform and stuff. So, I just have this little bit on this side, and then it'll go to the red. And then the last yards, I haven't figured if I'm going to do a big cowl or if I'm going to put a scarf type on it. But it will have something that elongates a red. And then I will have my choker um, with my sun thing. So, we'll see how it goes. And... Yeah, accessorizing a little bit just for the fun of it. But, yeah, it is what it is. And it is getting there. So, again, this thing is going to be nice and warm. And yet, nice. I, I can see you wearing it with a white t-shirt, pair of jeans, and this poncho for when the nights, you know, because some of the days are warmer. And then the nights are still getting cold. So, I could see that super easy. And you'd be warm enough. So the other thing that I've been working on is, and I just, I'm trying to use it stash. So, um, I don't know if this is going to be big enough, okay? But a friend of mine is becoming a grandma for the first time. And I, if you remember, this was a kit that I got and I made a hat and sock and uh, slippers out of it. Wasn't really impressed with it, but here's the thing, is it is soft and it is warm. I don't want to walk on it. That was my issue with it, is it didn't, like it hurt your feet to walk on it. The stitches, you could feel every stitch in your foot. So, I uh, am deciding to do a corner to corner. I have three full balls of this, okay? And I have what was left of a ball from doing the other stuff. Okay, so corner to corner, you have to do half and half. My stuff is jingling here and my, it's all tangled up now. Cause I just have it in a plastic bag because that other um, project is taking up two bags. So, and I have more bags, I just haven't gone and gotten them. So, on this right here, I will yard it out um, on the counter, as you guys have seen me do when I was dividing for that poncho. I will figure out how much is here and divide it in half and make sure that each side gets the exact same amount. Um, and then... On the second skein, I already know, because I have three skeins, okay? This is not going to come close to a full skein, all right? So, I already know that this is 146 yards. So, I'll just skein off 123. So, there will be 123 of this and this after I do one full skein. If that blanket does not look big enough, I'm going to go ahead and finish it and make it a dog blanket. And I will make a different one. I will go find some different yarn. I have other yarns in there. I have, yeah. It's just, I really think this will be cute as a baby blanket. Like to throw down. Um, they live in Louisiana. So just to throw down on the ground for, you know, baby to lay on or whatever. But if I don't think it's going to be big enough, I'll just give it to the dogs. Because I'm going to get rid of this one way or another. Um... And because I have to mail it to Louisiana, I don't have a timeline, really. I just need to make sure that it's big enough for the little one. So, I mean, I can be a week or so late or whatever. The baby's not even born yet. So, that's what this is going to be. And that's what I'm doing with it. And like I said, it'll be a dog blanket if I have to. Um, Worm gets all kinds of blankets. And Hitch, Hitch needs a good blanket. He's got one in there, but Worm takes it over. So, anyway, that is what I've been working on. Now, I have on the wheel that gray and white, and I worked on it a little bit, but I just didn't, I don't feel into it. And until I get all these projects done, I don't want to put, I've got that other two pounds of uh, 
is it domestic wool? Yeah, I think domestic wool in there to spin too. I just, I need to get these done and out of my basket because I still have the geo. Remember that's in timeout. So, um, I want to get these all done. One is, you know, corner to corner blanket. The only one that I would let slide is the purple one that I'm making for myself. I want the poncho and the um, baby blanket done. So I am going to work this weekend to get those done before I start any spinning. I also want to get that gray off of Miss Kitty. So there's that. <laughs> and I've thought about it. I might try dyeing that gray that it was the, if you remember, if you watch constantly, um, or consistently, I guess, uh, at Christmas, Worm destroyed a Christmas present that I had woven, and it brought me to tears, but I salvaged part of it and saved the wool off of it. I just couldn't put it all back together to the way the project was. So I salvaged the project, made it a little smaller, um, and I'm still not sure. He's got the nose, I, I swear, he's got this atomic nose because he can smell or sense when a big dog is fixing to come through our office and he only gets upset when it's a big dog and our doctor said that they have a nose and there's got to be a scent that lets them know that it's a big dog because he's not scared of little dogs he's in his own little thing he's got a gate there i just don't think he trusts the gate for the big dogs so <laughs> but he can smell that he can smell wool um I had a couple of cookies in my pocket, treats, you know, because we work, I work in a vet's office, so I always have these little um, miniature treats in my pocket for dogs just to help them calm down and decide I'm a good person and let me get their weight and get them, yeah, and handling them, and some of them get a little snippy, but yeah, for the most part, a treat makes it all better. So, one day I forgot and we were doing a Valentine's um, photo booth for our customers and I had had them in my pocket and I was making the dogs look up to them and then, you know, snapping a photo and then I'd give them one, but I put, I had several in my pocket. Well, apparently I came home with two in my pocket and Worm, he had his nose down in my pocket trying to get those. And I was like, what are you doing? Cause I had pins in my pocket too from doing my work. And oh my word, he wouldn't give up. He wouldn't. Finally, I stood up and in the very corners of my pocket, each corner had one. And I was like, how does he smell that? And we were laughing because his nose is impeccable. So yeah, um, he can smell wool. I, I don't know why he doesn't do anything with acrylic. He doesn't go after it, but he, real wool, he loves it. So um, yeah. There's that. But I am going to get that gray off of there. And it's gray and white. And I think if I dyed it a color, it would just look, you know, speckledy. So we'll see. I might dye it. See how it takes to dye. I have never dyed that. And if it's not real wool as advertised, yeah, my dyes won't take to it. So um, we'll see. It's something to play with, something to do. I don't even have any uh, plan for that yarn. I just don't want it wasted so I'm going to spin it up and ply it into a two ply and who knows maybe it'll be enough to make a hat who knows um so that is all the fibery stuff I have of course in the farmhouse it's been cold and then hot and cold and then hot today my big plan is to get all my laundry done like I said I don't even have any uniforms left because I've worked so much and I only have four yeah Four. and I've worked four days in a row so um, I've got to get the laundry done I've got to go get the oil changed in my car uh, RJ however is preparing this week he's gone and gotten health papers and all kinds of stuff because he leaves next Tuesday to go to Florida on the rodeo circuit with his friend Glenn Glenn's a good guy um, him and I don't know the other kid that they're going with so anyway but they're gonna go down to Florida and make a few rodeos down there and see how they do 
So it cuts gas for the three of them to go together. They have the trailer with living quarters. So they're going to take, I think they're not taking RJ's. I think Glenn's is only a two horse. RJ's is a five horse, but the other kid has a, and I say kid, he's 20 some. Okay. He's not a kid, but he's a kid to me. Um, I think he's got a four horse slant. And they're only taking three. So they want to take the smallest trailer to haul those horses to cut gas prices. So I think they're taking his and Glenn's truck. Not sure. So I think it's Glenn's truck and the other guy's trailer and they're splitting the gas. There you go. Uh, I've tried for years to try and get RJ to go away from Oklahoma to see where he stands roping because he is a good roper and the saying is if you can make it in Oklahoma you can make it anywhere they have more um used to have more world-class ropers in Oklahoma than they had in Texas now a lot of over the years now that was back in the 1950s and 60s and over the years those people have migrated down to Texas for softer winters so it might be that Texas now has more, but a lot of them are Okies. So anyway, but it is stiff competition here. The rodeo circuit is one of the hardest here. And I'm not the only one that told RJ he needed to venture out. Um, a couple other people have, and his friend Glenn is actually had planned and he's like, you need to come with me. You need to come try. So, RJ is going to go try. That's a good thing. Um, so, he'll be on the road um, Tuesday morning. Y'all send good vibes, good mojo. He'll be gone about a week. Um, and we'll see how he does. Um, but any good vibes, good mojo, prayers, whatever um, your personal beliefs are, send him all the good thoughts that you can. Um I just want him to be safe. I'm glad he's trying it. I'm praying that this is going to sound so terrible. I'm praying I was right and that the stiffer competition has made him a better competitor elsewhere. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. But just keep him in your thoughts, your prayers, your, your good vibes and send him as much good as you can. Okay, I just don't want anything to happen while they're down there. I want the horse to be safe. I want all the horses to be safe. I want the guys going to be safe. I want the truck and the trailer safe. Um, yeah, I have a lot of anxiety with him traveling with by himself. And I know he's not by himself, but without, I say without an adult, but he is an adult now. But I traveled with him for so many years and I know all the things that can go wrong and him and I handled so much on the road that it's like I already know all the things that can go wrong. So I get really about him traveling and I know he's a grown man and I know he can handle it. And if he can't, he'll call me and I will be in that car gone to Florida. So... <laughs> I will take care of my boy. You know how that is. Um, he broke down in Kansas. I guess you guys remember that. I just said, have the tow truck driver pull everything in and get you home. And I will take care of it. And that's what happened. So, Florida is a little bit further away. So, yeah. But, you know, he handled it. He ended up spending the night in a hotel for two nights in order to get home from Kansas. Um, he took care of himself. He was fine. He was fed. He had a roof over his head. But mom is just still mom. Okay. And if you followed us for any length of time, you know he has health issues. But his health has improved so much since he was a kid. It's still there in the back of my mind. So, yeah. But anyway, send him good mojos and good prayers and good vibes and every good thought that you can. Um, I'm going to be working on these just to get rid of any anxiety. I'll be at work or crocheting or spinning just to keep my mind busy. So he, he's fine. He's in good hands. And 
Glenn is actually, he's kind of taking Arjay under his wing. He's older. He's, I want to say almost 40. So he's not a young kid. And Glenn can handle it. So, yeah. Anyway. All right. I'm going to get off of here. You guys have heard enough of me babbling on about RJ and my fretting of him going to Florida. But it's going to be a good thing. It is going to be a good thing. I have put that in my head. Um, I want him to feel good about it. And I want him to go there and succeed. So, um, it is what it is. And what will be will be. God's already written the book. So, we're just waiting to find out the ending. Um, you guys, I will talk to you next week. And I hope that you have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.